Soterios Kiritsis. And I am Pedro Pasa. He is the writer and co-director along with me. And before we start this play, we just wanted to ask a quick question. We usually ask ourselves, what is a theater? Now, some may answer the curtains in which we draw to show our actors. Or we may say the stage in which they act upon. But those are elements of the theater. The theater at its core is a group of players and a group to receive what they are playing. So we ask you tonight to be a part of our theater, to receive what our players have worked so hard to play, and maybe, just maybe, play along with us. And with that, we thank you, and we hope you enjoy. Thank you for thank coming. You. years old, my mom took me out to a new restaurant in town. It wasn't anything out of this world, now that I think back on it, but it had a huge impact on me. It was the first time in the middle of nowhere 
that I felt someone actually decided to care. That someone actually thought of making some worthwhile food. <laughs> Not the shitty crap we used to eat at the delis with their ceramic tile walls stained with an unidentified goo that seemed to spread everywhere. And the dishes still glossy with whatever excessively fat meat the last guy absent-mindedly decided to eat with his rice and beans. <gasps> no, no, this was a whole experience. The decor was thought out, verging on rich people kitsch for sure, but there was still some thought that went into it. And the food? The only other time I saw something that well made, flavors that well combining, was when my mom cooked for me herself. As time went on, I began to be unable to feel that pleasure. My mom's cooking became as plain as the guys at the deli. So I began cooking for her. I began cooking for everyone. And the food was good. And it just kept getting better. But eventually, those idiots stop appreciating it. And don't get me wrong, I guess it's not their fault, okay? When you grow up in a social political shithole, there's no much you can aspire to be. But I knew I was better. I knew I had to leave, to leave them in the hole. I needed to ascend. Salvador, right? El Dorado. Kick ass, like the DreamWorks movie. It's tough to be a god. I love that movie. Yeah, like that. Yo, wait, wait. <laughs> Say something in El What? Yeah, like uh, your native language. No. Where I'm from, we speak Spanish there, but the reason I'm from speaks Portuguese. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Like, what Europeans discovered who and stuff. So, okay, wait, what region are you from? It's a mid-sized city near the capital, Diamandra. Diamandra, mm. very cool. Mm. How long have you been in the city? Wait, I didn't catch your name. I'm Dani. It's short for Daniela. And I got here last week. Cool. Yeah. What about you? Oh, uh, I'm Andy, short for... I got nothing, it's just Andy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. What program are you in? Oh, culinary arts, first semester. Really? Me too? Seriously? Yo, that's sick. We're gonna be best buds. I got a feeling. How'd you get into cooking? Oh, uh, well, when I was young, I think <laughs> around five or six years old. Oh, that goes deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. What about you? How did you get into cooking? Oh, uh, me? Well, um, my old man, he owns this pizza place, and uh, I just want to flip pies when he dies. I just, I really love cooking to express myself, you know? Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm like that too. Yeah. Do you, um, have a place to stay by chance? Um, kinda. I've been talking to the landlord, but they're eccentric, to say the least. Say no more. Look, I got a room in my place with your name on it. What? Yeah, okay, look. So I just moved out of my parents' place because I live all the way on freaking Long Island and you know, I had to move into the city proper and I, I really need a roommate. I, I was kind of looking for a place of my own. That's going to be like 
really far off or extremely expensive? I, I mean, I know, but I can be kind of weird sometimes, so it's... What, are you like... like you know, some weird hentai or something? What? I can get into that. No, no! That's, that's not what I meant! It's a joke, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, um, I'm gonna go mingle with the rest of the gang. You wanna, you wanna come? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah. We'll put it there. Hey, yo, guys, you gotta come meet this kid. They're from the place in the DreamWorks movie. <laughs> accepting my application. No need to thank me, it was perfectly laid out. No, I say that because I'm on a visa and not all buildings accept immigrants. I get that a lot. It, it's so real how much people can be dicks about that. I mean, this city was freaking built by immigrants. Well, yeah, but there's good immigrants and bad immigrants, so I cannot get the apprehension. Nah, most people who come in are ridiculously chill. I think New York should just be more accepting. I came here five years ago, and I still miss home a lot of the time. Uh, I won't miss mine at all. It was a shithole. <laughs> Trust me, you'll miss it eventually. If you say so. Oh, come on in. Here we are. <laughs> You're brand new home. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? Oh. Um. It's fine. A good place to start. I told you we get cozy right away. Mm -hmm. Now, if you need anything, just let me know, okay? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> well, uh, what is that? Flies. We're kind of near Brooklyn's restaurant row, so they cover the garbage and into the apartments. <laughs> They're not a big problem, right? Nah. You just you smack them and then you move on. It's not like there's a swarm or anything. Oh, good to know! <laughs> oh, that reminds me, you should try out some of the food. They got fantastic food from all over the world. Will do. One last thing, mm -hmm. you'll be getting an upstairs neighbor sometime next week. Oh. Some kind of rich douche who needs a studio and a Brooklyn to get business done. Okay. <laughs> exclusively about burning stuff, and this morning we had a class with a Michelin star winning chef. I mean, Schmidt. What's up, Teach? I'll catch you later, Danny. Chef? You're the pupil from earlier, from El. El Dorado. Ah, uh, yes. The one with the scholarship, as I've been told. Yes. I wanted to say how much I appreciate your work. Thank you. 
<clears throat> and although we talk about a reading class, I wanted to talk to you about your words from taking from your own culture. What more is there to say? I, the fact of the matter is that the biggest chefs use their cultural inheritance in unexpected ways to lift their taste buds onto new and unforeseen territories. I told you that in my class. Yes, yes. Um, but what if my inspirations aren't from my country? I don't quite follow. Chef, the food in El Dorado is awful. That's ridiculous. I've been to several El Doradian restaurants in general, they've all been quite good. There's a lot of room to work within your cultural inheritance. I just never liked it. I've never liked El Dorado in general. Why not? I've always been fascinated with the stuff made in the U.S. and Europe. It is so creative, so fresh. <laughs> My dear, the food scene in the U.S. is anything but fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and Europe has their own cultural inheritance. You can't simply copy them. Even if you're taking inspiration from, for instance, Mediterranean cuisine, you have to view it through your own lens. Yes, but what if that lens doesn't pass through El Dorado? It seems to me that you don't realize how much of your country you carry with you. It's a shame. El Dorado is a marvelous place. It's a dump. Just poor, uneducated people everywhere. I take it you don't plan on returning there soon. Why would I? Well, if they're as uneducated as you say, you could always reinvigorate the food scene down there. No, I want to say New York. Fair enough. But do remember what I told you. Don't be afraid of where you come from. Sure. You know what, I actually, I have a student from El Dorado in the fifth semester. Maybe you two can find out how your culture affects you. Uh, I mean, I could use a hand. Yeah, I'll set up a meeting next week. For now, remember what I told you. Yes, Chef. <laughs> First day and you're already the teacher's pet? Oh, I mean, if I want to make it big in New York, I need to network hard. I mean, for me, you know, most of Long Island's plus a couple weird hippies in Queens. No, real networking, Andy. Hey, those hippies in Queens are really good to know. Why? You never know when you need to bake some special brownies. Probably not in any of our glasses. Come on, Andrew. <laughs> Upstairs yesterday. Uh, no, no, no. It's just the flies. Throughout mm -hmm. the week, I only woke up to one. Like you said, no big problem, right? But then today, I woke up and there were three just flying around, being very annoying. And, and I was wondering if you can do this, something about it. Well, that, <laughs> that's odd. I could put in some fly catching tapes on your windows when you come back. Yes, thank you. That's all right. But what? Can you do it while I'm gone? I'm already kind of late for a meeting. I have to deal with the flies and and yeah. You know what? Yes, I I'll put them in as soon as you leave them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.
You must be Danny. I'm Charlie. Professor Schmidt told me about you. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So you're also from Alvarado? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What region? Uh, south, near Leonanda. Oh. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm from the north. Oh, so you're a Spanish speaker. See? Si. Por. That's all you're going to say? <laughs> Are you doubting my ability to speak my African language? <laughs> oh, uh, no, 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 that's, that's not my mind. Actually, you know, it's great to meet someone who doesn't fit the stereotype. Which one? That, you know, you all have heads up your asses thinking that you were European just because some German did move you to countryside in the 1800s. <laughs> wow, well, I'm surprised that someone from the North managed to wake up this early. That's a little bit. <laughs> You're the one who basically called me a fascist. Wasn't Porfirio Diaz from the South? So was Paulo Martins, and the Diaz dictatorship freaking murdered him. <sighs> but thank God we grew up after the dictatorship. <laughs> I miss it down there. Yeah, I couldn't care less. Why? Well, no one there understands anything about food. Oh, so you had to say that I had no idea about plant cuisine? No. No, 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 you're different. You get it. What is that? <clears throat> Professor Schmidt, show me your recipes. They're brilliant. Thank my mom, actually. She knows how to work her spices. I just adapted to fit it in the current scene. <laughs> That's northern cooking? Yeah, why is that too hard to believe? No, it's just so sophisticated. <laughs> well, it's... It's all in the way you make it, present it. It's all a facade. But we as chefs, we have to do something worthwhile underneath that facade. And it cannot be just the same regurgitated crab that people have eaten a million times. It, it has to be special. I never thought about it that way. Ah, oh, trust me. In what we do, there is lots more than meets the eye. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you must be Danny. How nice to finally meet you. I'm sorry, you are? Oh, I'm your new upstairs neighbor. I trust Lenny has told you about me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mrs. Lord? Oh, <laughs> just call me Lord, my dear. <laughs> so, we are just coming home from culinary school, yes? Uh, yeah, yes. Ah, I've heard you're quite the master chef. <laughs> I'm just starting. <laughs> A prodigy, so I've heard. It might be fun to have some prodigies running the country. <clears throat> I'm just a chef. Oh, not run it politically, run it culturally, you know? Establish what the good old U.S. of A is all about. That kind of thing. Not that it matters anyway. What? <laughs> Where are you from, my dear? El Dorado. Oh, must have been dreadful down there. All the poverty and the trash laying around. I... <laughs> I've been to South America before, and it was disturbing, to say the least. Yeah, you did good from here. But this is the place where you'll actually be able to thrive. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, where you'll be on top of the world just by wanting to be there. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, uh, what, kind of, what kind of cuisine are you thinking of introducing here? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to find something new. Kid. Good artists are inspired, great artists steal. 
Yeah. There's nothing wrong with simply remaking a classic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, eh? <laughs> We will talk. We have much to discuss. What? Sorry. And this is why. Andy! Is she swastika supposed to be cold? I knew Batman wouldn't have me, Chef. You're late. Sorry. What's the excuse this time? I didn't get enough sleep. You were one of the ones I expected more from. But clearly, you're not taking this program seriously to be late week three. I'm sorry. I swear, I'll start to show up on time. All right, sit down. Thank you. Dude. What? Is this the stuff with the F L Y Z? Yes, yes it is. But it's messing you up. You look like shit. <laughs> Andy, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering if you're gonna do something about the flies. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry, okay. I did call the exterminator, yeah. but they said that I need permission from the HOA and that could take weeks. Just <laughs> get it done, please. Sure thing. I've been trying to get them to check out Lord's place too. It's right above yours, so the place must be filled with them. Uh, no. She, she hasn't been complaining, so I'm sure she got it under control. I don't know about that, Danny. They're like, super freaking weird. What? Okay, so they keep their window shut all day, only stay inside, and barely come out during the day. <laughs> you know, they're probably a vampire. I, I won't even comment on that. Okay, or at the very least, really unhygienic. I mean, the place stinks. Stinks? Yeah. I can smell it from here. I I never really noticed. Just get it done, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, no. 
And you missed our last session. Gosh. I have a lot on my mind. Damn it, Danny. You could at least try to take this seriously. Last time we spoke, I thought you were actually interested in what we were studying. It's just... It's just more of the same. More of the what? More of the same. I come here and you talk about how fucking amazing Andorella was. And I go home feeling like an idiot to find it so shitty. Well, I mean it's not the Garden of Eden, but I miss my home. Why did you leave it then? What? Why are you complaining so much about here if you left everything behind? Huh? I want to find my voice and get better at my craft. And you couldn't do that in the middle of the desert you call home? It's not that simple, Danny. New York is where people are. It's where I, I can make connections and I need to make a living before even considering going back home. People just won't admit them or else them. It's not a dumb. There is tons of good there, like it is here. El Dorado will be what we make of it, Danny. Troy, it's filthy. Have you ever walked through New York? Since the piles of trash on every fucking block and you still think it's filthy? That's different. Oh! I thought you were trying to see things differently. I don't want to spend my days gushing about a third world country. It's not about gushing. It's about seeing it for what it is, for good and for bad, and accepting where you're coming from. Then even if you stay in New York, your culture is your strength. Yeah, you're right. Did you get any sleep? Nope. I thought, I thought, you were smarter than that. But I'm so I know it's not just insomnia then. Oh, I'm sorry. I am smart. I managed to win a freaking scholarship to one of the best culinary schools in the world, and this is how you treat me? Daniel, just, just do whatever you want and see how far it gets you. Thanks, I will. What did I just do?
washed it in a hole you crawled out of. But here, you are nothing but a scared little crybaby who can't go get an egg to save your life. I'm still through. My, my teachers. I'm going to listen to what your teachers have to say. I'm going to be a professor speeding. You know, most of them never even owned a restaurant. Yeah. And Schmidt, well, they got their little stars stripped when someone found out they were tampering with their food. In a unique way, of course. Who, who said that? Who? Oh, it was simple. Some real, uh, fly on the wall documenting, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Letting up, babe. You may still have a future in the culinary industry. You just have to give it to me. <laughs> what do you do? I give the people what they want. And that is? The same thing. Over and over and over again. Times change and people say they want authentic cuisine, but that's bullshit. People want something that says authentic to feel good about themselves. In the end, they're eating the same garbage as always. No, no, that, that can't be true. Oh, yes, it can. Have you ever eaten at a Taco Bell? I have no idea how they call that a taco. <laughs> what now? I've been starved for um, Peruvian food. <laughs>
Sorry. Class, today I've showed you what not to do in a restaurant. What? Shut, this is like the hottest place in town. I mean, it took us months to get a reservation here, plus, how did Danny get some huge fat loan from a rich guy? I have no idea. He's, they're just regurgitating old recipes from all over the world. Well, it's downright despicable. Sorry, but people love it. They say it's cultural because Danny is an American. Mm -hmm. They want to eat what they've always eaten. <sighs> Maybe I'm. I'm gonna go and say hi to Danny. Last time I saw her, it was with my bitnik day who left me midway through. Sorry, um, yeah, I'm gonna go say hi to him. Hey, well, uh, tell him I said, um, oh, hold on. Um, tell, him, tell him I said, uh, what's up? Two on four, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Denny? Not Denny! Denny, it's Charlie. Denny. Oh, Denny. Denny, 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 Denny. Denny. Charlie! Charlie. Denny! 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 What is true beauty? <laughs> Seems like I've been trying to find out that answer my whole life. Searched from the highest mountains, the deepest depths, and I thought I was closest. Class! What is true beauty? I would either say it's a sunrise over water, or a, a song that can make a sad sack a happy chat. No, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. It's definitely hearing a friend laugh. <laughs> it's a painting that I saw as a child. It was so vivid and almost violent, but still very peaceful. My mother, right after she finishes cooking, and we sit in together around the table and... Yeah. <laughs> True beauty is dead! Humanity killed it! When I got to the city, I went to Central Park. I wanted to see what New York had to offer in terms of natural beauty. When I got there, I saw this beautiful fountain. It was so beautiful that for a moment there, I thought I was dreaming. I walked closer and I read that it was actually a copy. The real one? Was in the Amanda. <laughs> I don't even remember what El Dorado looks like anymore. Except for that fountain.
guys. I'm the star of the show here. I put everything together here. <laughs> I'm the main character, the director, my hair, and all the transitions. Yeah. Ask me your first question. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah, if you have any questions, you just raise your hand. We will call you. Yes. I got a question. Yes. Uh, for the director. Hmm. What was Directors. The, uh, Directors, what was the inspiration for this play? Well, that's quite a story. Uh, <laughs> well, so when I first got to New York, I stayed for a while in an Airbnb. And it was, in, in fact, infested with flies. And it was terrifying. And after I managed to finally get out, I don't know, I just started thinking about a story involving flies and a situation like that. And I also mixed in like feelings of just missing home and missing, I'm from Brazil, so missing Brazil and all of that. And just, just got to writing it. So, yeah. Any more questions? Any more questions for the street, from the stream? Yes, do we have some questions from the stream? Don't all come at once. Not that I see, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking them. Um, hey guys, if you're watching, leave us questions. <laughs> Wait, Alexis, did you ask something? Yeah, what do you miss most about Brazil? I don't know. It's, it's tough to say. I think I miss my friends from down there, even though I found amazing new friends here, who are all around me. Uh, I do, I do also miss the ones in Brazil, and it would be cool if I could have all of them, the friends from here and from down there, all, at all times, but, you know. I have a question for my actors. Uh -huh. Each uh -huh. one of you, I'd like to know, what was the one thing that you found playing with your characters the most fun, the most grounding in, in each of your performances? Andy! Because <laughs> <laughs> she swas is supposed to be cold. That's that's the one that really did it for me. That line, yeah. I found it there. Uh, okay, well, since you're screaming my name, uh, <laughs> I I honestly think the thing that kept me most grounded uh, was thinking, you know, I'm, I want friends, I need friends, and I, and I need to keep keep everybody around me, you know, feeling good and happy and ready. Mm -hmm. So you know, even. Even this stuck up one over here. <laughs> Listen, if I didn't like you, I wouldn't have kept you in the program. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, for me, I would say, like, because, like, my character is, like, relaxed and doesn't really care. But at the same time, I care about you. I want you to stay. But there's only a point where I could take it. And if I am done, I'm just not going to care anymore. Which is why I keep promising and promising and it doesn't change. Well, since you're talking to me, I'll do <laughs> um, I think for me it was the fact that Dani was always trying to make people understand why she chose what she chose. So um, whenever I was about to go on stage, I was thinking to myself, they need to understand why I did everything I did. Learning from my peers. Learning from my peers. It's an amazing experience. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, she's not an actor. Um, um, <laughs> from the moment that I read the script, Lord's character was so, it piqued my interest because I've never read a character like that. And I found a lot of freedom in letting loose and allowing myself to just be an egomaniacal, like crazy person. So it was a lot of fun to just do anything. Hey, Flies, you're actors, too. Yeah. You are. Oh, you, you are. are. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a good hand for the Flies. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones sweating back there. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 So, uh, I think we have the same part that we really enjoy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the dance. The dance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but for me, it was also the first experience, like, performing uh, on stage for, well, an, an audience mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, in such a moment. Yeah, what about you, Jesus? For me, it, it was really great to be part of another production again. It was the day of our first run. I felt all the energy back then and new today, and it was beautiful. It was like being part of a family. Yeah. And you know that expression that it takes a village? It took a fucking village. It oh. took <laughs> one fucking village. And I'm just happy to be part of this. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm so glad to be here with my fly brother. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, what was everybody's first impression?
impressions of the script? What things stuck out to you first? I'll start off because there was one thing. There was one line that reached out to me the most, and it was, most of your teachers haven't even owned a restaurant before, haven't even worked in a restaurant. And this is a line that we hear in acting school for our teachers. Change, maybe not about a restaurant, but the idea of like success and, and, and learning from success and being around it. And then if someone hasn't reached a certain stature, then they don't have as much value as a teacher and things like that. And there was a lot of relation, relation I had with this script and like schooling and, and the idea that like it's not about where you train. It's a matter of how you train, and it's a matter of mindset. And I think that's what, that's what I really wanted to play with in this script. That's the undertone I really mm -hmm. enjoyed. <laughs> oh, the handsome gentleman in the back. Oh my god, guys, this is our stage manager. <laughs> Immigrants and what's your favorite thing about your home country? Oh, oh. That's awesome. I think show of hands. I'm both. Yeah. 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 Wait, wait. I might raise a baby. No, no, no. Who's going here? I know. I know. But yeah. Me? Yeah. What do you? Okay, me. Um. I'm from Mexico. I'm from Mexico City. I was <laughs> I was born and raised there. I moved to New York for NIFA, so two years ago. What I <laughs> what I miss most about home? That's a very difficult question because there's a lot of things I miss about home. I miss my family, my friends, uh, the food, <sighs> the food, <laughs> the food, and um, like the nature around there and. Just like, I don't know, there's this rhythm in Mexico that it's very unique and particular. And I miss that and like the, the warmth of people. Just like, mm. yeah, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm from Ukraine and uh, I've been... <laughs> 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 yeah, I think Charlie has a lot of similarities with me because I miss my home, I miss my country, but I'm also very grateful for what I have right now for my life and for being here, for having this opportunity. Thank you, Lila, for having this club. I appreciate you so much. And I want to just like highlight your work and um, the way you opened my heart to the theater again. Thank you. Oh, I already uh, answered before. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm good. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm from Moscow, Russia. No, well, yeah, I get it. <laughs> so, yeah, there is not a lot of things I miss there. In fact, a lot of things I'm glad that I'm far away from. <laughs> the, obviously, I, am, uh, I miss people more than I miss places, but I... Uh, I found myself on a, a bit of a saddening thought that recently my friend sent me a picture of like, oh hey, I'm hanging out down the street and that. For a second, I didn't even recognize that it was down the street where I li lived for like my whole life. So yeah, I miss my friends and my fiance. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully, and I'm pretty sure we will meet again soon. Oh. <laughs> Harshad, I saw your hand. Oh, yeah. Uh, I oh. want to ask both the directors real quick. What was, for each of you, what was your favorite scene or part to direct and why? Mm. Every single one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Which one no, do you think I've, you know, I you know most people. Creative, uh, like creative with? Or brought out your most creative side? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to run you through every character and every. <laughs> so, this guy right here. When I first saw him starting doing it, his physicality and sturdiness, his, his Chef Schmidt was so, like, demanding on stage. It was, it was, so, it was so gravitational. I, it, was, it was flawless. 
Chana over there, every time she's on stage, there's just this, like, I just don't trust you as a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would never in a million years. I just, it's just it's like, I would, I would never in a million years give this person responsibility. And she played with that so much, and it, it, it was glorious. Andy, this, this man right here, Malcolm, I mean, what a, what a corn dog. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a ridiculous character. What a, what a goofy, lighthearted, just like, want to be around person. That's just, it, it's fabulous. Charlie, over here, the, the, the depth of this character, she's, she's on stage twice and goes through two incredibly, like, different mind states, polar opposite of each one, yet I don't feel like I miss anything in between because she would carry everything on her face. She would stay in every scene, in every moment. It was like this, this intensity where you felt like you were not in the room, but you were kind of like fly on the wall watching <laughs> to my to my fly on the wall i mean the when you establish a normal world and try to put in like a a, a crazy moment try to try to make like ju juxtaposition a character it has to be that that actor has to be totally free to the character completely and completely utterly just in, engulfed in this person's justification. Because if the crazy is not justified, then no one will believe what's going on on stage. And, and she, she played so much, and it was, it was so much fun to watch. It was so funny. It, it, it created this element to the play that I didn't even know Lord was going to bring initially. I mean, you discovered so much through that character. It's, this run through was outstanding. Outstanding, it was, it was glorious. And then finally, to bring it all back onto my journeyman right here, Donnie. This character is a hard character to play. When you, when you are the sole driver of the story, when, when, you're, when your emotions, when, when your onstage presence is, is pushing the story and moving it forward, it is every single moment is integral. Every small face twitch, every, every, every clap at a fly, everything that she did on stage carried us through this story. It was, it was like, I... You wouldn't recognize. She is not like this in real life. She is not. She's not big to shit on places. Sure she is a sweetheart, but then, but but Donnie sucks. Donnie's a horrible person. Yeah. She's like so almost annoying to try to deal with, and that's a hard thing to play. That's a hard thing to play, especially as a protagonist. Especially as a protagonist, and 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 you, it was like, the confusion that you were feeling, the emotional train, none of it was lost. Every moment was found. Everything sat, nothing got stale. All of my actors, every scene in Arshida was perfect. What about the flies? The flies? Oh! <laughs> you know the flies! <laughs> they don't need, they are, they were, without them, Whoa. this world yeah. is nothing. Yeah. They are mine. <laughs> they are mine. <laughs> yeah, so we have a couple questions from. Hold up, hold up. I'd like to expand yeah. the last one really quickly. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Real quick before that, could Asante and Charlie like squeeze in more? Because I can barely see them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Get, on the, get in the lab. Get in the lab. Oh, oh, sorry, dude. Uh, no, you go for it. Shout out. So, uh, to kind of expand on that, I agree 100% with what he said. I it was so much fun just seeing everyone grow into these characters especially as the writer just see see them take so much from my words and expand them so much but i also wanted to add that it was a, another part of directing that was just so amazing was working with this freaking guy because without him it wouldn't have been half as good we are truly late we have a brain link that i cannot explain <laughs> We just work so well together as a team, and truly, he is half of, of all of this. He is awesome. Yay! Yay! Alright, let's check out the questions in the chat. Woo! From Canalego Machivo. Are the flies like a metaphor or something? <laughs> well, yeah. They, uh, <laughs> I think they are like how current industry basically just um, has a tendency to just kind of take what already exists, regurgitate it, take all that is special from it, and just spit it back at you. And that's not just culinary 
the culinary space, it's also film, you know, what, what we work in. And I think every other industry at this moment has a tendency to do that. And yeah, that's kind of what the, the fly idea is all about. And I think specifically with like these flies, the idea is that like, there's this like uh, great quote from Marcus Aurelius that I love that's like, why would a man ever yell at the world as if the world would ever yell back? Mm -hmm. And so like a lot of these issues we have and like a lot of these frustrations are very kind of like, we don't have a physical body to be upset with. Mm -hmm. So I think these like, these goofy, absurd like characters kind of living separate from the world, being in scenes where people aren't acknowledging them. It's like, they're a bit of like the nuisance in life that we don't see, that, that kind of peskers behind us, that sets the stage, yet we can't actually antagonize. Mm -hmm. We're goons. They're goons. <laughs> they're goons. They're goons. They're goons. They're goons. They're just little guys. We fuck this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got one more question. Like one what, more. what lessons did you learn from your character? We're not starting that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need a second. I think I learned to be more confident in myself, as corny as that sounds. Um, being given the liberty to like go crazy and there's no limits and no one's judging you because it's a character. It's like, okay, there are certain parts of this character that I can take and bring forward with me, obviously without being like a terrible person. <laughs> um, yeah, just more freedom and, and, and own ownership of my person. Uh, how to break it down? <laughs> <laughs> be a silly goofball, huh? No, just try to, just be silly. That's yeah. it. Be silly. Let yourself yeah. go. Ooh, ooh. And break it down. Break it down. <laughs> Bust a move. Yeah. Uh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> uh, can I skip? Come back. Yeah. And come back. Come back. We'll reroute. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Charlie good. taught me that helping people and fixing people are different. Mm. That's good. <laughs> That's, wow. I don't know how to follow up on that. Um, I've never, mm, I've never really been the authority type. So to like play a teacher, and also like the backstory that he has, it's like okay, I understand why people have sticks up their asses. <laughs> life, life broke their heart too many times. <laughs> uh, for me, I think he taught me, or Andy, Andy taught me to not take everything so seriously. Uh, and, and he also taught me something, and I was thinking about this yesterday. Uh, he taught me that even, even in the most awkward moments, what, you know, it, it's scary to go try to make a new friend, right? But Andy just so, it just does it. Even in the most awkward moments. It's a very awkward conversation, that opener. And he just kind of sits through it and just keeps asking questions, and I think, it's easy to make a friend. It's easy to make a friend. <laughs> I can go if you want. Okay. Um, it, it taught me the consequences of shutting yourself down and uh, closing people off of your world and trying to do everything on your own and not seeing the good and the bad. Like, not seeing the balance in everything and just going for one side or the other because both are in balance and both have consequences. Yeah. Um, I feel like with my character, like, I, me as a person, I am a people pleaser. I want to help people as much as I can, even if it drains me. So, but like, Lenny is like, if it's out of my control, I don't care. <laughs> and it's making me, like, just realize that I gotta live in the moment, not stress about the things that's out of control, and if you try your best, you try your best, and if it doesn't help people, so be it. Now, we're gonna strike the house lights. So everyone close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, Alexis. It was all a dream. Beautiful. Now I see all your faces. We have a little more questions, and one especially for, for the Lord of Flies. Okay. Oh, we'll take one more. Okay. We'll take one we'll more. I know y'all want to go home. We got to fly the chat. We got to fly the chat. Yeah. The question is, would you say that you got any inspiration for the role? If so, which ones? <sighs> so, I didn't get inspiration from any really particular characters. I think it was 
a collection of all the villains I've ever seen on TV, just like, or like anime villains, you know how they're like so overly like, you know? <laughs> so I was trying to channel that. And also, you know how everyone has the light parts and the dark parts of themselves? Lord was really taking a deep delve into the shadow parts of myself and letting that be seen. And now that it's out, it's like, it dissipates into the air. And yeah, I hope that answers the question. It does. <laughs> and with that, that's Phil. Yeah. One more pound. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. There's oh, one more. There's one more. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> no one listens oh, to the director. Yes, you guys went through this is what, one. Yeah, creating the play, and what did you learn from that? Like, Something about challenges. challenges. Oh, I can answer the challenging part. Oh my God. <laughs> I can answer that. Like, Go for it. Go you guys seen the trying to run cables through a ceiling? Everything <laughs> was built by us. Yeah. Just yeah. us. Oh, yeah. Alone. Oh, yeah. All of us. We did it. Oh. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay. And also this guy who makes photos of us, Alexis, yeah. he also has yeah. Let's go. Let's go. starting to get sweaty all up in this area. <laughs> we gotta get outside.